Welcome to Jelly Trumpet! Hang on, Mr B. Yes, Mr Jim. I'm going to ask you this only once. Have you been doing experiments with Jelly Trumpet again? No, Mr Jim. Are you sure? Sure as. We talked about this before, Mr B. Now, for the last time, have you been experimenting on the podcast? What makes you think that? Well, Mr B, if you look out the front window, you'll see several 11th century Norman knights on horseback, each wearing chainmail, covered with gabisons. That's a to tuning. They have drawn swords. Oh, and one of them is stabbing Jelly Trumpet with a spear. How did they get there? Reenactors, possibly? What do you mean, how did they get there? We're the ones that have gone somewhere. France? France, Mr. B. Sometime around 1150 AD is my guess. You've been using that time warp button again, haven't you? So now we have Norman Knights battering the Jelly Trumpet studio door, which would strongly indicate that you have landed us in 12th century France again. Well? Yeah, sorry about that. Won't happen again. You said that after the Alamo incident. Well, I am trying. It could be the keyboard, maybe it needs a software update, and, well, it's just such fun. Well, one day, Mr. How are we going to do a podcast about creativity in medieval France? Nothing stopping us. Hmm, you're right. OK, moving on. It's time for the trailer. Trailer time! Welcome to Jelly Trumpet, the world's only comedy podcast about creativity. Jelly Trumpet makes you more creative with tips, tricks and ideas for expanding your imagination. Especially good for business people wanting to be creative online. Ta-da! In this episode, a checklist for being more creative called The Nine Trumpets of Creativity. Our first trumpet is Put to Other Uses, all about rearranging your ideas. Challenge at Home, a creative exercise for you to try at home. And Challenge Gym, where Mr B challenges Jim with an exercise in creativity. Plus, a brand new micro sitcom called The Startup, with our hero Mary the Entrepreneur, starring in an episode titled Angry SEO Guy, part one, part two later. And our very special guest will take part in Interview Countdown. 12 questions in 12 minutes. Nine Trumpets of Creativity. Our first trumpet is put to other uses. This season on Jelly Trumpet, we'll be talking about our creative checklist, the Nine Trumpets of Creativity. Nine ways of being more creative a systematic way of getting the most out of your project or idea. You can use all of them, or any combination that works for you. So each episode will explore one trumpet. You can download the Nine Trumpets of Creativity PDF from the Jelly Trumpet website. Get cracking. In Season 1 of Jelly Trumpet, we delved into keeping your own journal about your experiences with creativity. We called the journal Being Your Own Medicine. The journal idea meaning you, and only you, can coach yourself into being as creative as possible. In Season 2, we've adapted a list of creative tools known as Osborne's Checklist, or Scamper. Why have we adapted it? Well, because Jelly Trumpet is about being more creative every day and making your creativity yours alone. Use what you like from the trumpets, build your own, get rid of what doesn't work for you, and then add other tools, create your own creative armoury. So build your own lists and record what works for you in your journal, being your own medicine. So here we go with number one in our nine trumpets of creativity. Put to other uses. You have a thing or an idea. What else can you do with it? Where can you put it? Somewhere it doesn't belong? Like using a fresh carrot to wedge open the kitchen door. Say you own a coffee shop. You need to make more money. How can we put that to other uses? What's the first thing that comes into your head? Turn it into a mobile device repair shop that serves coffee, perhaps? Here's a line about putting something to other uses by Eddie Izzard. Ooh, when a bird gets sucked into an engine, they call it bird strike. It's not bird strike, it's engine suck, a fab joke from Eddie. Start a line and finish it by moving the opening to another use. 
like, I've done a bit of Latin in my time, but I can control it. I really am the worst impressionist in the studio. Artistic swimming used to be called synchronised swimming. We could find another use for that. Perhaps put artistic swimming in the Winter Olympics. Artistic swimming under ice? In digital marketing terms, this could be using print in some form. I once used a printed brochure to amass email subscribers. We used Facebook advertising. People got the brochure for free. Expensive, but the idea brought in 30,000 subscribers in 18 months. The takeaway. Consider that the multiple uses of a single idea it can be an image or a thing. Ask yourself, how can I put this idea, image or thing to other uses? Mr B, could you close the podcast door, please? Sorry, Jim. Miles away. Close the podcast door? Why? Because, Mr B, several Benedictine monks have walked in, and I don't like Latin. So? So, I can't concentrate on the next bit of the show with Benedictine chants in the background. I like it. Perhaps some guitar, drum loop or two? No, Mr B. We don't want to encourage them. Imagine what our guests would say, wading through a cenobium of black habits emitting incense all over the studio. Mm, point taken, Mr Jim. And they're wearing sandals. Sandals? You know I don't like toes. Uh, explain the toe thing again? Toes, Mr B. They look like miniature naked piglets. As opposed to piglets wearing off-the-peg Pierre Cardin suits? Would that be OK? Yes. What didn't you say? OK. Pressing F12 and F3, pulling the lever and punching the steam pump. Thank f- Well, thank goodness. Monsieur? Who's that? I was going to ask you. I asked first. Yes, you did. You always ask first. Arrêtez-vous. I've an idea. What are you going to do? I've got music to make, you know. I'm a serious musician, sometimes. I'm taking a picture, then I'm going to do an image search on Google. Wait, we're in medieval France. Yes, I'm fixing that. Google might be a bit slow, by about a thousand years. I believe in those days they only had dial-up modems. There was no internet in 12th century France, Mr B. Um... What? (gasps) Ta-ra! We're back in the present. Well done, Mr B. Oh, St Albans looks so lovely in the spring. So, we have internet. Hurrah! Right then. The studio has broadband, you know. Oh! What? The lady would appear to be, uh. Queen Eleanor of Aquitaine. That's nice. You like a bit of history. Yes, I do, I do. I like the medieval period a lot. Wait, we're in the present day, and Eleanor of Aquitaine is here with us. Coffee, Jim? Hmm, that would be lovely, Mr B. What are we going to do with a medieval queen in the present day in our podcast? I'll get the coffee. Monsieur? Uh, ici, uh, Jim? Uh, et... Uh, him is a uh, nouveau, Mr. B. Stranger and stranger. Okay, we'll sort this out later. We've got a show to do, you know. Now it's time for challenge at home. This is an improv game. Walk around your house for two minutes. Point at an object and call that object the wrong name. So, for example, point at a chair and say out loud, dog. Now follow this with two minutes of naming things as the previous things. For example, a point at a chair, say nothing, point at the second object, say a bottle of wine, and say chair. So how quickly can you do this? Don't think. It's even more fun if you have a second person who follows you around pointing at the object and naming it wrongly as you have just done. It's a mind bender, a little like a short Cohen. Cohen's usually trip your mind up with a paradox or a riddle. This is like giving your logic a holiday your mind will get a jolt knowing that you don't have to accept what is in front of your eyes. The takeaway. So you've named an object wrongly, or as the first thing. Can you put this silliness to other uses? Try it and have a laugh. Particularly fun with two to three people. Where is she? Who? The lady, queen in her own right, Eleanor of Aquitaine. You must remember, big bright dress of shimmering silk and a crown. Uh, oh yeah, she's by the coffee machine. We're going to have to take her back, you know. Yes, let's do that. What are you doing now? Nothing. Then why have you chained a Justin Bieber dummy to a chair? It's an experiment. 
Does that explain the bucket of apricot jam and that hoe? Yes. Oh, I'll leave you to it. Café? Oh, le diable! Qu'est-ce que c'est? Moving on, Mr B. The show, Engaging Micro Sitcom. The startup, a micro sitcom. Meet Mary, the entrepreneur, going about creating an online business. The scene, the office of an established search engine optimization company. This episode, Mary, the entrepreneur, meets angry SEO guy. So, Dave, I want my business to be number one in Google for the word cake. Pardon? Did you say cake? That's right. Well, that's how SEO works, isn't it? We choose the word and then you make us number one on Google. No, it, it does not work like that. We have to look for keywords with intent. We do a lot of research. We create content. But all I want is the word cake. Well, it doesn't... Oh, come on, Dave. Of course you can do it. What sort of cake? All of them. Well, you'll have to narrow it down. You can't dominate the SERPs. Sorry, search engine results page. Is that Google? Well, yes. SERPs means Google. Well, why didn't you just I say? Just did. Sorry, let me start again. What exactly is your startup business? Mainly cake. Water? Oh, no, just cake. End of part one. Part two of the startup later. Creative Rituals In this season, we are giving an insight into how famous creative people, including writers and filmmakers, go about their creative process. These rituals are taken from a book, Daily Rituals, by Mason Curry. A friend of mine, Peter Friedman of Thinking, a viral PR agency, recommended the book. Anyway, the book is all about the rituals of well-known people, especially creatives. This episode, Francis Bacon. Francis Bacon loved to work in chaos. Agreeable interiors stifled his creativity. He was a man who would eat two to three heavy restaurant meals a day, drink several bottles of wine and always had a late night. But he always woke at first light and would paint for several hours before embarking on afternoons, evenings and nights of debauchery. Be like bacon. OK, bit of a struggle for some of us. Live the life of a creative in your own way. The takeaway. What rituals do you have, if any? Do they always work? How about recording and working on them in your journal? Can you make the rituals work for you quicker and make you more productive? Coming up, interview countdown. Challenge Jim. Mr. B will issue Jim a challenge. And list of the week. Sponsored by Conversion Detectives, the really creative digital marketing agency. Search conversion detectives. She, uh, the Queen, Eleanor of Aquitaine, she's nipped out. Well, we can have a think about how we're going to put the Queen back in 1150 AD France. What do you mean? That's odd. What is that? Uh, the coffee machine. It's flashing red and green lights and there's a skull and crossbones on the display. Did the coffee machine just say warning in a heavy Russian accent? Yes, yes it did. Well, we'll come back to that. We have a show to do and a guest to get on, Mr B. Cue the music. Attention Westerners. Interview Countdown. Hello and welcome to Roxana Gramada. Uh, Roxana Gramada is a conversion copywriter and UVP expert and the founder of Becoming Words. So she helps innovators stay crisp and persuasive in their pitches, websites, and emails. She has extensive experience in extracting and writing key messaging that qualifies and converts leads. Her masterclasses have powered up sales in 12 countries and her campaign generated conversion rates of 15% within two hours from sending, even on a Friday afternoon. What a fantastic intro. I'm very pleased that you wrote that for me. Um, so Roxana, uh, let's get down to it, to the 12 questions in 12 minutes, and we're going to be very strict this time. Uh, oh, oh no, no backstory. Right, okay, so first question. What is your business? My business is coming up with your key sentences, telling who you are, 
especially who you are to your audience. That's my business. And in marketing jargon, that's called positioning. Um, basically, it's the number one uh, question that you need to answer. Um, who you are for me? What's in it for me if I deal with you? That's your human being. That's my business. Cool. And a very creative one. So let's go on to the real creative nitty gritty question. Who is your creative hero or heroine? I have several creative heroes and heroines, but I have to start with Nora Ephron. Um, she was this uh, writer, journalist, um, film director, producer. Um, I first came across Nora sometime in the 90s when I went in to the cinema and saw this soapy film called You've Got Mail that I still love and watch when things are bad because it just restores my confidence in humanity. Mm -hmm. Um, so that would be my number one hero when it comes to writing. I adore Jerry Seinfeld. I pretty much worship at the, um, uh, the altar of um, Jerry Seinfeld and his creative process. Mm -hmm. um, and I can go on and on and on forever. But if I would say something that I, you know, Warner Earhart, he's another hero. He's pretty much the Plato of my days, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you want to read something that's really worth your time, that's Speaking Being. Speaking that's Being. That's the title of the book. Yes, that's the title of the book. Okay, I'm making a note of that. Right, let's go on to our next question, which is, this is one I always like, how do you start a project? I start a project with a cool induction call. Because <laughs> you, you're never going to know anything from your head. It's always going to come from the client. That's the point of the conversion process you talk to the client and you talk to the client's clients and that's how things get together and I have an entire method around it um, but that's for another time but basically I start with gathering all the evidence and then looking at it that's it that's the whole answer is it do you want me to go on <laughs> no because I can I mean you say it's enough and we'll we'll we can save that for the um, for the bonus episode. Uh, yeah. Right. Oh, so this sort of follows on. To what degree do you map out a project? Well, if you're a conversion copywriter, um, there's pretty much a process already in place. Um, if you follow the school of Joanna Wheat, which is copy hackers, and I'm 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 a graduate, so this is what I do. Um, so there is a method already in place. Um, you already have to, um, you gather your evidence, you put it in the um, ultimate messaging map, then you look for patterns, then you choose a format, and then you put your evidence in that format, and only then do you start writing, because things are going to come screaming at you, you know, the tech lines are going to come, come screaming at you off the page. Um, but first of all, you need that structure, and you need to follow that process. So if I was going to give any conversion copywriter, I mean, if they're beginning, they're starting out, is like just go to copyhackers.com. Copyhackers.com. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, oh, so this is one that uh, I like asking as well. Question number five. How do you know when the project is finished? Well, you know, because basically you have a, you have a, a draft and then you go through it. And after you swipe for whatever you swipe for clarity, blah, 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 blah um, essentially you're, you're going to know when you're ready, or at least for the presentation to the client. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you can be a seamstress about it and then you're never done until mm -hmm. the dress is off the runway. You, you would still knit and, you know, take, you know, yeah, trim you. and whatever. But you can also be the kind of person which says, oh, Listen up. Um, all I had to say about this is there. I don't have it. I'm all worn out on the subject. I tend to be on the latter, you know, um, category. So I just, when I go with my content to the client with the copy, I am pretty much done. Excellent. So this is a more creative question. Well, it's all about the struggle, isn't it? So question six, what's the best thing someone has said to you that kept you going when it was a struggle? Hmm, because we lean on them, right? 
Um, for instance, I was in um, this um, writing retreat in Italy with Laura Belgray, and I had just started out. I was fresh off the boat. You know, I had been like a medium corporate show before. I was head of marketing, blah, 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 blah. But now I was doing it for myself, and I was like, what? Do I even know what I'm doing? And she told me I was good. And I flew home off a cloud and I was like, oh my God, now there's going to be waves and waves of business coming my way. That's nice. not, that's not how it works. But she kept me going because she basically said I was good. And, you know, I had a conversation the other night with Angie Colley, badass direct copywriter. Mm. And, and she basically said, well, these numbers are very good. <laughs> keep going so yeah she she kind of yeah she helped cool it's always nice to have someone that can help you with that now this is mm -hmm. another this is a revealing question number seven Roxana are you honest with yourself oh how can you be right answering that question <laughs> everyone that's the whole point of it you have to be creative <laughs> well I'm going to say I am honest with myself sometimes you know there's this, um, if you are um, going to read that book that I recommended, Speaking yes, Being, you're going to see that um, most of the time we're inauthentic about who we're being. And then we're authentic. And then authenticity something opens something up. So when you become honest about where you've been dishonest, you know, when you're authentic about where you've been inauthentic, and I don't want a nuance, so on and so forth. But basically, when we say how we were jerks, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. something right. happens yeah. something opens up so when i'm stuck the first thing i look around for is where am i being a jerk right and it's that happened quite often of course we're human <sighs> beings <laughs> just be provocative just for the hell of it now what's the proudest you've been of one of your ideas hmm i remember when I read the list of questions from you, I was like, what the heck am I going to say here? <laughs> Listen, I am not going to say I was proudest of something because that's very tough for me to recall. In mm. fact, I approach life with a moderate um, amount of enthusiasm. Um, so you're never going to hear the tones of proudest, biggest and blah, blah. That's never really going to come out of my mouth uh, unless I'm quoting. But here's a pretty good one um when i came up with the name for my business yes that was you know just becoming words not that bad i would say and also the romanian i mean yeah. whenever i say the name of my company in romanian people say like oh that's pretty good so you've got you know becoming words which in romanian has several other nuances so i'm going to say i'm proud of that and i'm going to mention how i read my copy once and my client cried Ooh. Oh, that's really good emotion conversion. Yeah. That's an yeah. interesting one. Um, oh, right. Number nine. What is your next project? Oh, I have. Um, I'm writing this piece about how to extract the truth in 20 minutes. And I have a first draft, but now I'm going to write one version for copywriters and one version for entrepreneurs. And this is going to take my time, at least the next week or so. Right, so we're going to rattle on to question 10. Should creativity be taught as a skill in schools? Yes, as long as you don't call it creativity class. Ah, any ideas what you'd call it? Fun class, play class, Fun something class. like that. Yeah, because yeah. it is essentially play, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a very successful... Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes class, playing detective class, you know. I like that. Um, yeah, detectives in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Great. Now, this is another one of my favourite questions. Well, they're all my favourite questions, to be honest with you. If a 10-year-old asked you, what one thing would make me more creative, what would you reply? Oh, I'm going to say these two things. Number one, a library permit. And yeah. number two, puzzles. Oh, oh I'm, a big, I'm a big puzzles nerd. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, I am. I will. We can continue that in the bonus episode. Absolutely. Now, you've done very, very well. And you're going to get question 12. Then you're going to get a bonus question because you've been so good. 
uh, and I appreciate that. And Mr. B would appreciate it even more. So number 12, how can a listener get in touch with you? The best way to get in touch with me is to be on my email list at becomingwords.com. Um, and you go to the page um, becomingwords.com slash get the guide and get my guide for how to come up with the answer to, with, to the ultimate question. And no reference to Hitchhiker Guide to the Galaxy at all. No, no. Just saying. Um, so be on my list there um, because I write really um, insightful emails, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, the other way is you connect with me on LinkedIn and DM me. Cool. So okay. just Google Roxana Gomada on LinkedIn and there I am. Excellent. So you have unlocked the bonus question, Roxana. You've done very well. But I'm not sure which one to ask you. So should I pick one or did you have any in mind? No, go ahead. I'll trust your gut. Right. So I'm going to do it for question number three in the bonus track. And that is, what's something no one knows about you? Hmm. Something no one knows about me. Hmm. Not even me. I think you'd have to guess. Yeah, because you know how there are things that we don't know that we don't know. Well, yes. So, um, something that no one knows about me. Oh, you know what? I think that a hundred years ago, or even seventy years ago, mm. I would have made an excellent housewife. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. I've had all sorts of things come up with that question, including no one knows that I really like fast cars from a lovely lady in Yorkshire. But I wasn't expecting that. I think that's something we can continue in the on the bonus bonus track, which will be available shortly. So that was my guest, uh, Roxana Gramada from Becoming Words, a conversion copywriter. And it's been an absolute delight. And thank you very much for being a guest on Jelly Trumpet. Thank you. I think it's Challenge Jim next. Yes, it is. All is lost. Death to the West. Do you think the coffee machine is trying to tell us something? Possibly hacked, Mr B? I think so. Usually it just makes Americanos. Attention Westerners. Watch Fox News for the truth. We should do something about that. Yes, we should. Anyway, I was thinking we should encourage a significant social following on a variety of social networks. Then we can take on the big boy podcasts. You know that Joe Rogan, that Rob Beckett, that James Acosta, that... Just you and me, Mr B. I can see it now. Jelly Trumpet, the world's only comedy podcast about creativity. It's us, Mr B. It's us against the world. Against the world. Le diable. Uh, what was that noise, Mr B? Eleanor has just thrown the coffee machine out the window. Right, uh, well, we'll need a new coffee machine. I'll put it on the list. We'll come back to this. Challenge Jim! Up for a challenge, are you, Mr Jim? Yes. Each episode, we challenge Jim with a creative exercise. Ready? In this episode, Mr Jim, you have one minute to put a cat to as many different uses as you can. Starting now. Well, um, yeah, cat, who thinks of this stuff? Okay, so my you favourite do, cat. Yeah, I know, but it's a main, a main coon, my favourite. Because they're giants. Could you imagine saddling one? I mean, that would take the place of the buses, of the trains, etc. And how much milk? Um, well, yeah, bowls and bowls of it. But they love milk. Oh, no, you're not supposed to feed them real milk. You get cat milk, which you take from the... Cream? The, no, from the supermarket. So anyway, so we've got a cat as a bus, we've got a cat as a train, but we could also have them as TV presenters, couldn't we? Or supermarkets. Yeah, or supermarkets. They could man the tills with their big fur, and then you'd be worried about fur balls, though, wouldn't you? So you'd always be wearing a mask, especially if you're allergic to cats. But then you could have them on TV. They could do the one show, couldn't they? And then all you would see is six or seven Ten seconds cats asleep on the sofa. And you would just listen to them purring gently. Five. Because that's a good four, sound. Three. And also two, as um, one. hairbrushes. No, that's not going to work. Tony's word of the episode. Tony's word of the episode. Tony's word of the episode. Sternocleomastoid. Sternocleomastoid. Which means, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, a large dog who is both serious and an inhabitant close to the River Clyde in South Lanarkshire. That makes no sense. I'm trying. We'll come back to this feature. I'm in love. It's hard trying to be funny all the time. Is it? Tony's word of the episode.
Everything under control, Mr B. Everything is under control, Mr Jim. I think we're moving on to the tales from the medicine journal bit now. We are. One thing. Yes? Uh, Tony, voiceover guy, was wondering if we could increase his fee. Hmm. What do you suggest? Well, I was thinking an extra sausage each episode. Oh, agreed. Tales from Jim's medicine journal. Not only does keeping a journal help you coach your own creativity, it can be a place for solving knotty problems. If you are a writer, you can list tools and checklists for ideas that make your writing different, add inspirations and notes. I've gone through many spells where I can't write what I want to write. I was writing a sitcom script for a competition once. It was lacking. So I looked up my medicine journal at a section I have for stuck in a rut. And I came across Be an Animal, a note from a book called Writing Down the Bones by Natalie Goldberg, which is about being a writer even when you are not writing. The note goes on. Walk with an animal walk and take in everything around you as prey. Which I did. Ended up chasing a fox down the road. No, that would be silly. But it made me stop overthinking and take a rest. I went for a walk, came back, wrote with little thought and enjoyed what I wrote. The takeaway. Sometimes the answer is very obvious. But when you are a creative soul, the obvious is not what you pay attention to. And that's a mistake. Give in to the obvious record it in your medicine journal because you're bound to do it again, like me. Mr B, have you ever had a chicken taka? Is that like a chicken tikka? Yes, only it's otter. Fantastic! Our micro sitcom, The Startup Part 2. Mary the Entrepreneur is at the office of Angry SEO Guy. Your business is? This one. You have more than one startup business? Three this week. So, this one is a cake mix for bodybuilders. Bodybuilders? It has protein powder in it. How long before we're number one on Google? The cake? Yes. A week? Well, we'd also like to get 10,000 views a day on our website. Have you any other options? Oh, yes. We have all the flavours. Chocolate, carrot, champagne. I want to vent. Is that an SEO term? No, it is not an SEO term. OK. 9,000 views a day. No problem. Oh, thank you, Dave. I look forward to working with you loads. See you tomorrow. Great. Police, I'd like to report a murder. When? Tomorrow. Yes, Mum, it's me. Yes, Mum. One of those days. I'm starting to like Mary the Entrepreneur. And Eleanor of Aquitaine. Blast! We've got to put her back where we found her, Mr B. Right. Setting Jelly Trumpet to land in 1150 AD medieval France. What was that? Oh, I think we've run out of juice. What juice? Well, I didn't tell you, but Jelly Trumpet runs on, well, uh, juice. Juice? What sort of juice are we running on? Pineapple? I developed a mix. Go on. It's a secret. Mr B, tell me what is in the Jelly Trumpet juice. OK, but I'm not going to give exact proportions. Agreed. Part steam, some ethanol, a little solar, some hope, a peck of imagination, oh, and a pair of Eddie Izzard's lace-up boots. So, have we run out of pecks of imagination? No, sun's in. List of the week! This week, things I do slowly when I'm on my own. Number one, revenge. I didn't mean that, no, no, no. Number two, eating a single crisp. Number three, stroking my hair. Number four, sipping coffee and watching people. Number five, delighting myself with a slow walk around a library. Number six, writing with a pen. Number seven, sipping wine. Number eight, smiling at someone else's success. Number nine, walking and listening to what is around me. Number 10, giving the benefit of the doubt. Number 11, sipping more wine. It's so civilized. Well, I think this episode has gone very well, Mr. B. 
Yes, Mr. Jim. Well, apart from the unfortunate abduction of Queen Eleanor of Aquitaine, mm. the smell of incense, mm. the coffee machine getting hacked by a foreign mm. power and running out of sun. Mm. But you love a jelly trumpet, right? Yes, Mr. Jim. Hang on while I switch to the emergency jelly trumpet juice. You can do that bit about ways of seeing. Ways of seeing! Ways of seeing. Like thinking, which contains different categories of thinking, critical, creative, big ideas, etc. You can see in different ways. When you're an artist, you draw the positive shape, but you can also draw the negative shape. So say you were drawing a teapot, you could look and draw the negative space which the handle goes round. Just saying, which different ways can you look at the same thing? Jim's work offer. So each episode, I'm offering one of my writings for you to use, adapt or put on. I just need you to tell me what you would like to do with the piece. Let me in. This is a short comedy sketch. You'll find it on the Jelly Trumpet website. Email me, jelly at jellytrumpet.com, if you would like to use the sketch and what you'll be doing with it. Join us in further episodes and... Be more creative! Pick up tips and tricks you can put in the play instantly. Try exercises to boost your imagination. Listen to creative guests. And a whole lot of what we call fun. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions or ideas for Jelly Trumpet, email us. Jelly at jellytrumpet.com Her name is Sharon. That was Jelly Trumpet, making you more creative with Jim Kinlock and Mr B. Sponsored by Conversion Detectives, the creative digital marketing agency. And now here's We Paint Houses with their song Let Me Fall. Find them on Facetube and on Bandcamp. Climbing out the box, I gave myself to get a little rest. Paying some attention to the nightmare running in my head. Where do I begin to order all these things on top of me? Clearing all this mess for so much longer than say the thank yous Mr Jim and then we can pop down to the supermarket for a new coffee machine have you heard from Arthur Maurice butcher to the stars that's the chat uh, yeah you left a voicemail I'll play it hi Jim I dropped today's sausages at the back door did you know you had monks in the garden singing monks at that anyway have to go now more meat to deliver oh where's my list I drop off Ellie Golding her tribe six whole lambs for Kylie a haggis and giblets for Lisa Tarback. And Daniel Radcliffe is just desperate for his venison and goat pies. Don't know where he puts it all. He certainly knows his meat. Yes, he does. Oh, is that Keith Lemon lying in front of the door? Yeah, I'm training him to be a draft excluder. That's nice. Thank you for listening. Thank you for all those that encourage Jelly Trumpet. Thank you to Mr Tony for the voice work. Thank you to Miss Claire, the voice of Queen Eleanor and Mary the Entrepreneur. And thank you, Mr B and Kel. Stay fab.